<laughs> Hello my friends! Welcome to the 12th episode of the item guide series. Today we will talk about 4 mage items. Divine Glaive, Genius Wand, Clock of Destiny and Blood Wings. Now, before we start and get to the shoutouts, I want to announce a little community project that I would like to make with all of you together. I want to make a guide with tips for players in each rank that should help them ranking up much further in the next season. And while I was thinking for a concert about it, I thought, what is better than getting tips from a single person? Exactly. Getting tips from hundreds of players who already finished the mountain climb in this season. So to everyone who want to participate in this community project, you can fill out this form and give your best advice to everyone that is currently one or more ranks below you. So as a mythical glory player, your advice is to mythic or legend players, as mythic player, your advice is to legend and epic players, and so on. You can give one advice, or three, or 37, it's totally up to you. The link to it is in the description. If I'm including your tips in that video, I will of course feature you namely, and if you want to say something to the community, or just want me here to say something, I will also include that. Also, make sure to fill in your in-game ID in this field, because I want to connect this to the next giveaway I'm making. Everyone who is getting featured in that video will have the chance to be one of 5 lucky winners who will receive any skin of their choice. I hope you guys like the idea of a community guide. For me it's a great way to make a guide like this as valuable as possible for everyone, because we all together can get many more useful tips together than a single person like me ever could, and it's a nice chance to have more interaction with you guys. This is by the way something I really want to further increase over time. The interactions with you guys. That's also one of the reasons for the Q&A video. Whew, so much talking. Five shoutouts, quickly. Ter Salomon, Lind, Dorsey J, J and T Muta and Minerva. Comments, something nice, you've got it. Let's finally start with the items and talk about Divine Glaive. You get plus 65 magic power. It has also a unique effect that gives you plus 35 magic penetration. <coughs> to anyone who doesn't know what penetration effects do, it basically just tells you how much of the enemy's defense is ignored. So if the enemy has 100 magic defense with a unique effect, it gets reduced to 65. It also has a passive effect and it's called Spellbreaker. Each point of the enemy's magic defense increases the magic penetration by 1.0%... 1.0? No. By 0.1% when you're dealing damage to it and it's capped at 20%. This item is the magic version of Malefic Roar, or Malefic Roar is a physical damage version of Divine Glaive. See it as you like. I'm using Eudora for the demonstration. This bot Layla has 200 magic defense and without the item and 89 magic power, I do 216 damage. Now with the item equipped and the same amount of magic power, I'm dealing 341 damage. Quite a big difference, as you can see. So, who is this item for? In general, you can build it on almost all heroes who deal magic damage. You should build it in the mid to late game, in order to reduce the magic damage from mostly fighters or tanks. In the early game, the magic defense of the enemies is too low, as that the percentage magic penetration will make a big difference. For this, you better build items with a fixed magic penetration value, either Genius Wand, which we will talk about next, or Arcane Boots. You can always check the enemy's attributes here. When you see that your enemies are not building any magic defense items, you don't need to build it and can focus on other magic items which will increase your damage more. As mentioned already a few times before, if you're able to change your build according to the enemy, it will drastically improve your performance. Now, let's talk about Genius Wand. We start again with the stats. You get plus 75 magic power, plus 5% movement speed and plus 10 magic penetration. That's a fixed value, not a percentage one. This item has one effect and it's called magic. When you deal damage to an enemy hero, you will reduce the magic defense of that hero by 2 to 9 points for 2 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. The amount of reduced magic defense scales with your level. For every 2 levels, it's increased by 1. I'm using Eudora again for the demonstration. After I hit the damage board, you can see that his magic defense is reduced by 4, because I'm on level 5. Unfortunately, it's not resetted after 2 seconds, at least not visibly. If I keep attacking him, the reduction will stay on him until I haven't attacked him for 2 seconds. This passive is also activated by other items passives, such as Lightning Truncheon or Glowing Wand for example. So, who is this item for? Again, 
Basically all heroes who deal magic damage can use this item. Since this item has a fixed penetration value, I prefer to build it as my first or second core item, because in the early game it's the most effective. Also don't forget that the defense of an enemy can go down to minus 60, what further increases your damage if an enemy has a negative value. But even in the later game it's useful, because of the higher magic defense reduction and the magic power that it gives you. Also notice that this passive effect stacks up when different heroes use it. So if we have 3 heroes for example that deal magic damage and all of them build genius wand, they can reduce the magic defense of that target up to 81 points, which is a massive amount. Now let's talk about Clock of Destiny. We start again with the stats. You get plus 615 HP, what a weird amount, plus 60 magic power and plus 600 mana. It has two passive effects. The first one is called time. Each 20 seconds you gain 25 HP and 4 magic power. This can stack up to 12 times. The second effect is called reincarnate. If the passive time reaches its max stacks, then you will receive an extra of 5% magic power and 300 mana. This demonstration will be fun. We will now stand here and look for 4 minutes how the stacks increase. Hey yo, what the I need to stretch that video for the extra YouTube money. Enjoy! Ok guys, I'm just joking of course, but I'm excited to see how many of you double tap at this point to jump forward. Yes, I can actually see how many of you did that. There's nothing really to show of course. The 5% extra magic power of course also increases the stats from any other item, emblem or even your base stats. At a full build this can easily increase your magic power by 20 to 30 points, depending on which items you build. Now the question, on which hero should you build it? You can build it on all mages who don't have another more important core item. To give you a few example heroes who you maybe shouldn't build it on are those for example who are very mana hungry like Lu Yi, Lilia or Esmeralda. Or heroes who need cooldown reduction items like Cyclops or Harith for example. Otherwise you can build it on most heroes. I would advise you to build it as your first core item. Then you can benefit from the passive bonus much longer in the game and if you take the items cost into account it's the best magic item at full stacks from the pure stats. Last let's talk about blood wings. It gives you plus 500 HP and a whopping plus 150 magic power and is therefore the item that gives you the highest amount of magic power from the pure stats. It has one passive effect and it's called guard. You gain a shield equal to 200% of your magic power. After it breaks it has a 30 seconds cooldown. Let me show you quickly how it works. As you can see after I build it I get a shield. Yay! The cooldown is not counting down yet. After it is destroyed you can see this little icon appear and the 30 seconds cooldown started. And after waiting for 30 seconds it's back. <laughs> now who can use it? You can basically use it on all heroes with a build that gives them a huge amount of magic power. Like this you can gain a huge shield with more than 1000 HP which lets you sustain much more in the late game. Talking about the late game and by the way even the item description tells us this already, this item is a late game item. You should build it as your fifth or last item. Firstly it's very expensive. Secondly the shield is very low as long as you have no magic power and therefore pretty useless. And thirdly it's better to build other items before which further increase the use of this item. You could build holy crystal for example which greatly increases your magic power, we will talk about this item in another episode as well, or oracle which increases your shield by 30%. Now go and fill out the sheet if you want of course. And also don't forget to join my discord server. See you over there.